Cindy and I want to welcome you to our April 2021 PA meeting. We're glad you all could join us. We have um, a fairly full agenda tonight. We have uh, the always uh, adorable and wonderful Kelly Nottingham, who is actually going to speak first tonight, which is um, highly unusual because we usually have her play cleanup. Um, but she has another meeting to go to, so she is going to chat with us briefly, and we will hammer her with a couple of questions. Um, Cindy's going to speak briefly, Debbie as well, and then we're going to have Allison um, from Princeton Review. And then we're going to talk about elections, because that will be at our next meeting, May 20th. Um, uh, Cansey and Lincoln are going to go over that um, in some detail. Then we will have Mr. Newman, and we will pepper him with questions, as we always So, Cindy, do you want to welcome everybody as well? I was just going to say, Lisa, we lost you for a second. Um, yes, hi, everyone. Nice to see everyone. Um, do we need to introduce Ms. Kelly Nottingham? Well, of course I know. we need to introduce Ms. Kelly Nottingham. And here's Johnny. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. <laughs> you want a musical interlude? We can do that too. You all are so funny. So, um, you know, nothing like remote learning. I am here doing homework with my five-year-old. Exactly. See, now that I put you on the spot, now he wants to focus. He's been trying not to do homework this entire time. Um, I wanted to go first tonight because I did not realize this was tonight's PA meeting. I don't know how I missed it. I thought it was next Thursday and I do have a parent meeting for my other son at seven, but I am going to come back when it's done uh, because I, I can't not be here. I love you guys. <laughs> so I'm gonna probably try to do like a dual screen thing, like have them on my phone and keep you guys on my computer just so I can hear if I need to chime in but I will for sure come back before the end of your meeting, no matter what. Um, with that said, I'm gonna go first because I wanted to talk about graduation and I wanted any questions about graduation to be asked now. I don't know if Lisa, you have some that were submitted that you need to throw at me, but the overview is it is still uh, June 23rd at Arthur Ashe Stadium. We wow. will be requiring, not now, we will be requiring, um, I believe, the rule is a COVID test within a certain amount of time, a negative COVID test within a certain amount of time. Right now, Yankees and Mets are doing a six hour window before the game. And I don't know if that's going to be our requirement. Now, let me back up a second. This is for our graduates, okay? Right now, we've, we're doing it based on about 13 to 1500 graduates being present. The good news is that the survey that was due yesterday at five we have a little less than 1,100, which every number counts, okay? Because we can only fit 4,393 right now based on 20%. We can only fit 4,393 into Arthur Ashe at 11, a little less than 1,100. We can now fit two parents in, but we still have to figure that out. Everyone will have an assigned seat, including those kids in the major, and only the kids who filled out the survey will be hearing from us regarding in-person graduation. 100% of the class will be a part of the virtual graduation ceremony, but you know, only those kids who took the time to do the survey last and up to last night will be invited to talk about having parents there, you know, how many tickets they'll get, what the requirements are to attend. Now, state law says, your child didn't fill out the survey, but they want to walk in graduation. They can. The kids who filled out the survey will be the only one that, that's allowed to have guests. All right? I want to make that crystal clear. So if for some reason you missed that survey, you're on this call tonight, you may email me and say, Kelly, I missed the survey. And I will add you to the survey just because you attended a PA meeting. It's like, it's like a boost. But other than that, guys, I got to move on this. I have so many things to do to make this graduation happen. I'm just, I, I mean, I don't even know. I, I can't even catch myself. So we have to get the stage. We have to get the chairs. We have to, or, we have to do so much in this much time. So you have to be paying attention to your emails. If you see something from Miss Massey, it's more important than from Mr. Newman at this point. Because it it's about graduation. 
She is going to be emailing everything we need. There's, it's impossible to call every house. So please be sure you're paying attention to your inbox and the word Massey, M-A-S-S-I-E. Um, we're excited to be able to have guests because before that survey went out, when we were at 1,500, then that puts us at per, two per 4,500. And don't forget the, the faculty have to be there. So we couldn't do guests before that survey. So now that we know 1,100 kids or less want to go, we could totally play with the numbers and figure out where everybody's sitting. Uh, again, it's going to be only two per, per graduate as of right now. I doubt we're going to get up to three. And it will be live streamed. So you can totally have a backyard party and set up your projector if you want or in your living room and have your family there, you know, cheering on your, your graduate from the comfort of your own home uh, and then meet up later. But that's basically what it is. We tried to do tailgating. Um, it just doesn't work due to COVID. Otherwise, they're not tailgating for any games. They're not tailgating for, for any Yankees or Mets games. It's just not happening. So uh, we couldn't get that going. And, and when I say tailgate, I'm not talking about liquor and all that. I'm literally talking about families being able to gather. And we were going to try to pu put the graduation on the Mets uh, Jumbotron so that you guys could literally all watch the graduation from your car. And uh, we just couldn't do that. So that's where we are right now with graduation. And if you have any questions, I would love to answer them. Wow, nobody has a question for Ms. Nottingham? I think they're just so excited that we're gonna have a graduation. We don't, we don't wanna cause any trouble. We're just <laughs> gonna say thank you. I put in the chat. <laughs> the, huh? I, I put in the chat. I was okay. asking about the vaccine. The vaccine card, I don't know. Remember, if you we don't know yet if those with the vaccine don't carry the virus, right? So if you have a vaccine, but you're carrying the virus, I still wouldn't want you to attend a graduation per se. That's just me. But now new research is showing that those with the vaccine are not carrying the virus. I don't know which end is up right now. Like if you were to graduate today, you would need a negative test. Like anything else with COVID, that could change tomorrow. So I can only give you what the rules are right now. And you know, I, I too am, am, am in process of getting vaccinated. I'm waiting for my second dose. So I, it doesn't like, I, even in June, I would definitely have to still get the test as it is right now. And I'm working the event and I have to have my test within six hours, sorry. So that's, that's just the reality of, I'm sorry. And most of us will be vaccinated by then. But again, the rules may change. Let me check the chat. Who is the speaker at graduation? Am I allowed to say that now? I can't say it. I'm not allowed to say it because it has to be announced a certain way. I need you to not be five right now. You may say that to the kids. You stop being a 13 year old. Um, I thought the email said negative test or a vaccine. It might've said negative test or a vaccine, but it definitely, um, the last conversation I had with Mr. Studley from Arthur Ashe was a test. I have to, you know, like I said, it'll all be mapped out for you. I really wouldn't worry about it too much. We're also, the, the guy who does the staging, He's working on having an on-site COVID uh, testing tent for those who can't get their COVID test in advance before they walk into the stadium. So there are so many avenues, guys, but the point is it's gotta be safe. No matter what, it's gotta be safe. So, and David Newman is the co-host now. All right. Is there an issue with Naviance? I'm trying to see what colleges students have chosen and it doesn't seem to be loading. I haven't heard that. Um, that question would definitely be from Ms. Cuesta. She's in charge of the college office or Ms. Quinn, you can forward it. You can ask me the question via email, Tina, and I will be happy to forward it to them and somebody will get back to you, but it should definitely be working. I haven't heard anything otherwise. When graduation begin, do we have a thought as, as to timing? We Good were, question. We were thinking one o'clock, but with the, with the current guideline of having to be vaccinated six hours before, I would say three. It's just not fair to expect people to be vaccinated when they have, you know, modern MD or city MD or whatever, they open at eight. So I can't, I need to give you as much time as possible to get back to not get vaccinated, to get your test and get to Ash, Arthur Ashe Stadium. You know, if you're coming from the top of the, well. How long do you think it will take graduation? Four hours? I don't remember. No, Four hours? Three less. Less. It's three or less. And okay. when it was three or less, Half of it was the actual mentioning of the names. So now that we've only got 1,100, we're not saying 400 of them. So you got to think two and a half or less hours. And we can't have as many speakers. We cannot have as many speakers. There will not be that many people on the stage. 
Um, it's going to be truncated. Wait a minute. Are you saying you're cutting out Cindy's and my tap dance routine? I didn't say that. I, I'm cutting your tap dancing, but you're more, you two are, it's going to be me, you and Dave on the stage. That's pretty much it. And the guest speaker. Okay. And Cindy will do double duty because she's alumni. So we'll just, you know, decorate her like an alum. And then, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, and call it a day. <laughs> Lisa, we better start working on that routine. You should. You're going to end up like Dorothy from Golden Girls when she stubbed her toe and she had to have toe surgery. I don't know who in here knows Golden Girls, but that would be my thing. Um, okay. We digress. Philly. Hi, hey, Rania. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything so if else? nobody else has anything from Miss Nottingham right now. Golden Girls? We need to talk. We email all the time. We should probably throw a <laughs> That's my jam, okay? I go to bed with Golden Girls every night. That's how I stay so chipper. <laughs> Fun fact about Miss Nottingham. Love my there you go. Join, join the club. Trivia. I do it too. We should do a Golden uh, Girls alert, party. Alert, <laughs> Patricia, trivia question. Oh, did she put a trivia question in the chat? No, no. She's trying to make trivia questions. And there's one. What is Miss Nottingham's <laughs> jam? <laughs> I love it. Favorite. Oh my goodness Anything gracious. Else? All right, so Miss Nottingham, you might pop back in later. I will pop back so in later. You know I can't resist. Just some, one of you text me when um, you're wrapping up so I can come in and say goodbye. Oh. All right, okay. I'm gonna Sounds stay. Like a plan. But when I log into the other meeting that I have to go to, it may take me out of this one to go to that one. I don't know if I can do both. If it does, I'll just pop back in. Just make sure you text me when you're down to the wire, okay? Absolutely. Thank you so much as always. Um, thanks, everybody. Give it up for Miss Nottingham. Thank you. My turn. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I wanted to put a plug in. I need volunteers. Um, I, we've sent it out attached to multiple announcements. I've snuck in that I need volunteers. Um, it, the event is Monday, April 19th. That's this Monday. Um, it's virtual. Um, it's reviewing resumes for some of our juniors and seniors in CTE majors, which is career and technical education majors. Um, you don't have to be a resume expert or a hiring person or any of those things. You just need to be familiar with what a resume should look like for a 16 and 17 year olds and how to help them. Um, and this project is con in conjunction with uh, AP Rosie Eddy. Um, there are two time slots. It's 9.10 to 10.25 and 11.55 to 1.15. I need 34 volunteers. Right now I have 25. Um, you can uh, email uh, PA president at bths.edu or if you want to put up your uh, email in the chat, I'm, I'm happy to have you. If, you're, uh, if you have a family member, aunt, uncle, um, of the student or someone in your family that be willing to help in this way, uh, we'll take them too. Um, so please consider helping. Like I said, I need another nine students to make this happen. And, and, and the, in the, um, the volunteers will be receiving the students' emails um, tomorrow or evening or by Saturday so they can have a minute to review them. So I really need to know by midnight tonight if you're able to help. Um, and this I think could be the structure of other ideas we've had in needing parent volunteers for these short little things that help improve our students' um, uh, capabilities for future opportunities um so I, I think cindy you know what was saying is the hope that is if we can put something like this together we then might be able to help seniors um doing college interviews we can have people role play with the students and therefore um you know this is the first step and maybe we could turn it into something a, a bit right. larger so that's what um, i was alluding people, to I, I see 
I see my good friend Valerie has um, oh, yeah, Valerie, volunteered. Thank you. And there is a, a, a couple you. of other people I saw posted an email address, so that would be wonderful. Um, as Cindy always says, many hands make light work. So um, Yeah, we, we are. T- and I to- will also reassure you parents who are paranoid like me that there will be no personal information exchange between the volunteer and the student and their personal um identifying information will be removed from the uh, resume before it is given to the family member, parent, um, volunteer, just FYI. I see a few more, I gotta write them down. Thank you, Um, stop talking now. All right, so um, Debbie, our treasurer, um, is gonna post the treasurer's report. um, And we have not had many expenditures and we've continued to take in money so we thank everybody um for their generosity um hi and debbie <laughs> um ahead, so where, where are you in the chat i put the link to the march treasures report um like lisa said a very slow month we took in about thirty six hundred dollars total uh between donations uh, matching grants that come in um, and the only thing we really spent was, um, we helped pay for the Voices Leadership Conference. It's, um, a leadership conference for students, like, that are in charge of the clubs and stuff like that. So that was $4,500. Um, there was $1,000 still from Lunar New Year. That was a raffle prize that I had not yet paid out to someone. But that was basically it for the month. So, so the expenditures were less than, um, it was a little over $5,000, less than $6,000. I also wanted to point out that um, on the budget, we had expected to have an income for the year of $192,000. Now, 30,000 of that was supposed to be from the spring benefit, which obviously didn't happen. Um, so that would have cut it to 162. But we're already past that. We're almost at $175,000 of income for this year. So I just wanted to say, you know, let everybody know that we're way ahead of everything. Um, If you have any questions about anything, you can put it in the chat to me or you can send me an email, patreasure at bths.edu. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Debbie. You're welcome. That's perfect. Um, We are now going to... so. Uh, as I had mentioned, we're going to have Alice and Pascal from Princeton Review um, talk to us for a few minutes, and um, and then we're going to move on to talk to about other business, and then ultimately, like I said, Mr. Newman. So, Allison, if we can unmute you, and you would like to give us an update, I know that you have some good things for us. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much, Lisa and Cindy. Um, so, I will, if I can, um, Am I allowed to share my screen? If not, I can just talk. Um, if I can, I have some visuals. All right, Kim, that, that's your department. <laughs> right. Kim is, Kim uh, is Allison, you can share, I today. gave you access. Okay, awesome, perfect. Thank Work you, Mr. Charm. Norman. Thank you so much, Roland. I know uh, everyone is having Zoom fatigue, so I promise uh, I will keep this short and sweet. Uh, and again, thank you guys so much for having me. I have to leave the new screen. There we go. Um, quickly, uh, you know, I talk, I was uh, lucky enough to be able to t- speak to you folks in January. Uh, we went over some things in test prep. Uh, we went over some of the supports we provide through uh, Fabulous PA. And um, I just wanted to pop back in, give you guys an update for anyone that missed us back in January and be here to answer any questions briefly. So. In terms of academic support, and I know now we're late in the year, but hopefully we'll be continuing into next year, summer programs as well, uh, all BTHS families get a 10% off all academic tutoring and 25% off academic courses. So especially thinking now towards the summer, uh, you know, we're probably going to have another COVID summer, hopefully a lighter edition this time. But if you're looking for things for students to do over the summer, we do have, uh, especially uh, younger students, we do have uh, geometry and algebra courses that are meant to prep them before they take those courses, take those classes in school. We also, and this is something that not um, a lot of people realize is a benefit of our partnership through the PA, 
Uh, everyone has access to one free hour of a service that we offer that has been actually really like wildly popular over the last year, which is called on-demand tutoring. Um, essentially what it is, it's Netflix or tutoring. You log in um, if you have a question in geometry or chemistry. And, you know, I, parents are at this point very tired of answering students' questions in geometry and chemistry. Uh, students are able to log in with their question. They can upload a photo of um, the question if they're working from a worksheet, upload a screenshot, and then they can connect live with a tutor over chat and voice who is going to be able to work them through the question. And uh, you just get docked for the number of minutes you took. So if you upload a picture, work through it six minutes, then of your 60 minute free trial, you still have 54 minutes left. Uh, so if you want more information on that, I'm going to put all the uh, everything in our final slide and I'll put it in the chat. But I just wanted to let you know about that, especially as students uh, kind of are rolling into finals now. Of course, our bread and butter, we have our test prep programs. So as always, 10% off all SAT and ACT tutoring uh, and 25% off all live, now of course, online prep courses. Uh, so uh, in terms of SAT and ACT courses, uh, we have two levels of class and you can see how much uh, they are with your 25% discount at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, we have our honors class, which is a score guarantee class, SAT 1400 plus, ACT 31 plus, and our uh, essentials class, which uh, our honors class is 36 hours, our um, SAT and ACT essentials class is 18 hours. Now, uh, you, if you have a student taking a June or July exam, uh, there's still enough time to prep with a class. And of course, BTHS 25, that's the code for 25% off, and that's an evergreen code. You'll be able to use that forever, it doesn't expire. Um, and there is still time to prep for AP courses, uh, for AP tests. We have AP cram courses in all of the subjects listed there. You of course get that 25% discount and you're also doing a good thing for the PTA, for the PA because they get the 5% back. So you're doing a good thing, doing two good things at once. Uh, uh, two live class sessions, um, a copy of the prep book for the uh, subject that you're taking the class in and um, on access to a number of practice tests online. There is the information, and again, um, that's all gonna be available on your uh, Princeton Review landing page, which is princetonreview.com slash BTHS, which I'll put in the link, put in the chat in a minute. As I said a couple times, uh, BTH, BTHS families receive 10% off all private tutoring, including our new, and this is gonna be for any parents of sophomores at this point, um, 1500 plus slash 34 plus score guarantee tutoring. So if you are really looking to have your child get that top, top, top score, we do now offer score guarantee tutoring and 10% uh, off is really the best that you're gonna get on that, um, which you're able to get as a BTHS uh, parent. So quickly rundown, I know we are almost, we're in the home stretch of the school year here. Uh, if you are not, if uh, you need a reminder about what's coming up, we have two ACT uh, administrations left this year. In terms of the SAT, there's one in-school day left and you'd know if your student is taking it. Uh, and then we have the two uh, late spring exams, May 8th and June 5th. Uh, you can, if you want to try, you can still register for May, May 8th late and you can definitely register for June 5th. Uh, and then there's the, uh, especially great for um, rising juniors this fall, there's the August 28th date. And of course you can prep over the summer and you have lots of time to do that. In terms of AP exams, and you know which one your student is taking, you know which administration it, they're going to be taking it in, they start really soon. They start in just about two weeks on May 3rd and go through June 11th. Uh, and don't contact, uh, and contact your, stu your student's guidance counselor if you need help with that. But if you want an AP cram course, we have those available uh, and there's still time to sign up. Uh, I tried to get that all in in under 10 minutes and <laughs> I will be more than happy to take any questions. Uh, and uh, Allison, you, you, you did really good. Somebody asked the question, is there a cram course for um, Calculus BC? Uh, there is. Uh, oh, sorry. There is. I'm sorry. I whizzed by that slide. Yes, there is. Um, and oh, and you can um, click that QR code if you want more information. Uh, put, give, put your email in and I'll send you all the information. So you can tell you're a New Yorker, Alice, and you talk just as fast as I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'll stop sharing now. I'll also put that link in the chat. Uh, thank you so much for your time, folks. And I'll put my email Terrific. in the chat if anyone wants to email me.
Thank you. And then just so you know, um, Princeton Review will be doing a raffle um, in conjunction with BT, uh, with Brooklyn Tech. And I don't know if you want to give a quick overview of what that will be. Yes. We have not selected a date yet, but um, why don't you give us a one minute on that? Absolutely. Date pending, we're going to have uh, an informational session attached to a raffle for um, a pretty large academic bundle. So it's going to be a bundle of tutoring that's going uh, to be really great for, um, I'll pull it up right now. Um, so it's uh, going to be a bundle of tutoring uh, for the winner. Uh, and it is going to be about a $1,500 value of tutoring um, that you're going to get for free if you win the raffle. And uh, all you have to do is come to a short presentation where I go through everything we just said, but at a speed that is comprehensible. <laughs> um, uh, and the date is pending, but it's going to be a fun time, I promise. And I'm even going to try and throw in some like second and third place prizes in there. Not like at the $1,500 level, but you know, something fun, some books, something, I don't know, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Allison. We appreciate it. We appreciate your support. Okay. Um, Maria wanted to th some information. So Allison, if you take a look in the chat, um, a couple of people have given email addresses. They want to get some information for, for you. Absolutely. Um, okay. Cindy and I want, we need to talk about elections. So as we mentioned, elections are going to be at our next meeting, which is May 20th. Um, and as you know, Cindy and I are graduating. Um, and so we just want to tell you that it's important that if you have the, um, the wherewithal, if you think you want to volunteer to please do. Cansey Davey and, and Lincoln Flowers are board members right now. And they're stepping up and taking a much more active role. Uh, not that they haven't already, but now they're really um, kicking it into high gear. They're going to go over the different positions that we have available on the board so people can get an idea. In this week's Tech Talk, we will post the email address where people can um, email their interest. There'll be a Google form that we'll have out there. We have a wonderful group of volunteers um, who were terrific in our elections in October, and they have um, agreed to help run our elections um, this this May. So we encourage you to think about it. Like I said, Kansi and Lincoln are going to give you an overview of the positions that we have and a brief description. And again, then we are going to um, start peppering Mr. Newman with questions. So um, Kansi and Lincoln, we turn it over to you. Hi, everyone. I'm Lincoln Favors. And first of all, let's talk about uh, PA positions that you know, will be available during the election. We have a uh, president, a uh, co, and uh, if, it, if you guys are gonna do the co-president, we need to have um, uh, two people to run or one person can run as president. Um, right now, I am running for that position with Kenzie. Um, next is the treasurer. We, um, originally, we have um, Debbie, who is also leaving us, um, graduating, and basically we deal with all um, all the fund rate, uh, all the funding that comes in from donation to um, you know to the PA, and that's you know all managed by Debbie and the new person who will be coming in to replace her will be taking over that position. We have um, another position is assistant treasurer which is the backup for um, the treasurer. So basically both function will be done by both the um, treasurer and the assistant treasurer. Uh, next we have the recording secretary, which is what I do. Um, that is basically for every meeting, we record a summary of what is to be done and then send it out to be posted on the, the, you know, the tech talk for PA. And the co-recording secretary is, you know, recording, you know, corresponding secretary is basically the person who do mainly, you know, all the, the work that comes in to, you know, to PA for help, uh, for, you know, additional information. And that's basically it. Did I miss anything? 
so yeah, that's that's some of them. And I'll just pick up where you left off. So we also have a communications committee and um, we will be, that's one of the positions that will be on the ballot. It's usually two people, it's currently two people. I'm one of them. So that, that position will be available as well. And what we do is we send out tech talk and all of those emails that you get from the PA come from the communications committee. So if that's something that you're interested in, that would be something that, that you might wanna consider running for in the fall, well, in next month. We also will have the positions of co-VPs for diversity and community engagement. And if you've participated in any of the panel discussions that we've had this year or um, the opportunities to go to the social justice and racial equity book studies, that's what they do. So if you're interested in that, that would be a good fit for you. Events and volunteers, that is a co-president's position as well. And if you have participated in the breakfast and dinners with Principal Newman, that's a PA sponsored event that we put on providing that opportunity to get your questions answered and to have a small conversation with Mr. Newman. So if you're interested in those kinds of events and they've done much more, that'll be on our website shortly. That would be the events and volunteers committee. Fundraising, fundraising, um, the treasurer talked a lot about how we raise funds and the funds that we uh, uh, accumulate from your generous donations. And we use the fundraising VP actually work with that to give opportunities to help all of our students. So that position will be available. And we have our class representatives for each grade, senior, junior, sophomore, and freshman. So those are positions that will be available. Freshman reps, of course, um, will happen in the fall when we have incoming freshman families, but sophomore, junior, and, class, and senior class parent representatives are, those positions will be on the ballot as well. So we hope that you'll consider um, running and joining the team and helping Brooklyn Tech move forward in the way that only we can. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you, Kansi and Lincoln. There's definitely something for everybody to do if you want to. And also too, if you think you might wanna help with fundraising or diversity, but you might not want to necessarily run for the VP position, but wanna be part of the committee, we need to know that too, because um, you know we need more people to become more involved. It'll help us branch out and reach more families and more students. Um, so we encourage um, parents to get as involved as they can. Um, and with that, I'm going to introduce the one and only Mr. David Newman. And we have some questions that parents have sent us already. And then we have questions that um, have popped up in the chat. So we're gonna give you a drum roll and we're gonna say, welcome Mr. Newman to the April PA meeting. <laughs> Thank you, thank you for that welcoming. So uh, I'm ready to roll to fire the questions at me. All right, can't see Lincoln. You've got the the set questions that we've we do. Some yes. people will let you go first. Yep, Lincoln is up first. Yep. Okay. So scheduling. Uh, the first two weeks of June, some students had you know had to take the AP exam. What is going to happen to the schedule? Um, That's the schedule. one. Oh, I'll say, do you want me to you, you keep going? Okay. Will there be a regular class or there will be no class that period? Okay. Uh, regular schedule. Those are instructional days. Students who are taking APs are excused from their classes, um, but everybody else, business as usual. Oh, okay. All right. Next is the last week of school. Some students has to take um, the region. Will there be a regular online school for the other student who will not be taking the region? No, so uh, region stays are mandated as instructional days and therefore there is no school in session. So on the, uh, I'm trying to think of the days, I think the 17th, the 20, uh, I forgot the dates off the top of my head. Um, there's three dates, obviously, as you know, we're only giving the ELA for juniors um, and freshman uh, living environment and Algebra 1. Those are the only three exams. Every, every other exam is canceled. On exam days, though, there, I mean, there, it will likely 
uh, not be a day of instruction for anybody else. Historically, uh, Regents days are testing days and not instruction okay. days. All and, right. and also be mindful that no matter what, um, the, the exams are all in person. So ma no matter what, there will not be any in-person classes. Uh, that's absolute. Okay, so uh, there's another question that just popped up. So if the, um, do they need to be tested if they're coming in or? To, uh, tested? No, yeah. you just have to fill out. You're talking about uh, the health screening wise? Right, um, yes. They would just have to fill out the health screening just like everybody oh. else. Yep. Okay, all right, next question. Uh, most freshmen did not receive um, a BTH, you know, because they were fully remote. Um, uh, the same of the same, uh, some of them um, will have to come in June to take the regions. And all they, they didn't receive the a what? They didn't re what did they receive? They did not receive the, it says here, BTHS. Uh, um, are they talking about ID maybe? It could uh, be about the ID. Yes, it is. Oh, it the is ID? about the ID, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. I mean, if you don't have an ID and you're coming in as a freshman to take Algebra 1 or living environment, we'll work that out. You're not going to, we're not going to mail you an ID. We're not going to make an ID for you on the street. So uh, we'll, we'll get you in, you know. It's, okay, it, so, it's, uh, yeah. okay, so there won't be any issue getting to the building nor no. finding a room. Nope. They'll probably okay. have to know their OSIS number. And then the, the people at the door, instead of swiping it with an ID, you can actually tell them the number, they type it in, and then they know you exist, if that makes sense. Okay. All right, Ken, so do you want to take on communication? Sure, yes, definitely. So we had some questions about communication. Uh, there was one question about attendance. It says that parents are consistently sending emails to the attendance office at BTHS to um, bring any mistakes to their attention, but they're not seeing the changes, is the school actually making that correction? And how can we get that confirmation that the change has been made, if it has been made or when it will be made? Yeah, the, the confirmation is the issue that, that uh, most likely the changes in, has been made, but it's not reflected in, they can't see it. It's not reflected in scheduler, but it's reflected in the real um, DOE system that we use to take attendance. So, um, yeah, we have to figure out a way. I mean, if, if you're not sure uh, whether the attendance is fixed or not, you can email me and then I'll, uh, I'll get your response on attendance. So, you know, if, if all else fails on anything, basically email me and I'll take care of it. But um, they, so that, that's the, the problem that it doesn't update and schedule even though it's been. So you can email me and I'll get you a confirmation that it's in fact been changed. Okay. Also, there was a question about AP exams. Parents are having a difficult time finding the email. So was the email from Brooklyn Tech? Was that from the College Board? And which, which email address would it, be, would, it, would it have been sent to? Um, I think it was sent through Constant Contact, which means it went to BTHS. Um, Kelly, can you, it, was it sent out through Constant Contact? I don't know if she's. She's she multitasking. So she I know my, my son actually forwarded it. To we me. can hold that one. We okay. can hold that question for okay. her because I keep asking my son and he's like, huh? My so daughter got I it I, I on her BTHS. My son. No, my okay. daughter got it on her BTHS email. Yeah, I think it was sent yeah, to constant the, contact you, you, and yeah. that has only okay. BTHS. Okay. Okay, so we'll definitely yeah. confirm that. When okay. Again okay, we'll hold the question. Okay. Okay, so then one more question. I made my son forward it to me today, so at least I, I had it. Okay. There was a, also a question about ACT accommodation request made in March, um, and they're concerned about the deadline. It says, what do I do when I don't get a response from, I think, it's, is, it, is it Mr. Ventura who hands, who handles that? That is true. ACT accommodation request. Yep. And they are concerned. They don't want to miss the deadline to register their child with the accommodation. So how do we go about addressing um, that yeah that would be mr ventura i'm gonna put his i'm gonna put his email in the chat so what they're concerned with that they're not getting a response when they email him so what's the next step in that situation email me okay okay i'm gonna put my email in the chat then. <laughs> so lincoln i'll let you just uh type the questions on the grades and then i just have two more that just came in late okay sure 
All right, so great. Uh, so, Mr. Newman, this is great. Um, in Pupil Pack, uh, I'm having the same issue too, just to let you know. Um, since the pandemic, all assigned assignments are given are graded in Google Classroom, and grades are then entered into Pupil Pack. Will this continue in 2021, 22 ac academic year? I, I, I'm. <laughs> It's hard for me to uh, tell you anything about 2021, I mean, 21, 22. Uh, um, so, I mean, if we are, a couple of things. One, if we're using Google Classroom, that means we're still uh, educating kids with this modality, right? There, there's still going to be some online component. I don't know if that's going to be true or not. That, that would mean that some kids are in the school where some kids are home at different times, right? But I will tell you, they are working on a way to sync the Google Classroom grades to the uh, to schedule. Uh, so we can so once you put in one, it goes into the other, and schedule being the official place that we uh, house grades. So we're working on that. I think if we are still learning in this kind of capacity and still using Google Classroom, I think by then we'll have the sync worked out. Um, it's not a us thing. It's obviously. Um, something that needs to be worked out with the schedule of people, um, IO education, but I think that's going to be ready to go for the fall of, if we need it. Okay. There's one question that's not on the list, but this, this is, I've been talking to other parents and they brought this up. Um, sometime in, you know, when you get the Google Classroom, when parents set up a Google Classroom, they keep getting like missing assignment, but they're saying that their kid completed the assignment, but yet it's still showing up as missing in Google Classroom. Yeah, I, that you have to work out with the individual teacher. That's the only okay. person who would know that, you know, whether the assignment's been done, whether it's been graded. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so last question here. Um, it seems like there is a considerable time log with, te with when teacher post and grade in the pooper pack. And, uh, you know, the parent can seem to catch up or figure out if their student is behind or in our head. And that's one issue, you know, we have Yeah. Um, teachers are given uh, a week to get assignments into, uh, to make its way into IO education or scheduler. Um, they have to update things weekly. So it's not really a full week, but they have to update things weekly. So in maximum they have is to get things in, in a week. If you're finding that that is not happening, it's taking longer, you need to reach out to the, that person's supervisor, the AP of each department, you know, okay. the department that that teacher is in. So is, there, so is there a way to improve the system, streamline it? They streamline it beyond a week. I mean, that's sort of the deal that we've made that they have to enter grades in weekly. And so okay. uh, that, that's sort of been a standing deal that we've had for a long time. Uh, but, the, you know, if it's longer than a week, um, we need to know. Okay. All right. Uh, Kenza, do you want to continue? Yes, I just have two questions. One of them, it, they're actually related. Um, one that came in was that homework, homework, homework. The homework policy seems to be unclear, not on the parent side, because we've had so many meetings about this. We've heard <laughs> your timeline for mm -hmm. how much homework should be, should be given and how long it should take. However, it doesn't seem like that's getting translated to the teachers based on the amount of assignments that students are getting. This email says that, her students are doing way too much homework and they're actually getting burned out because this is burnt out because this has been going on so long. Grades have gone from honor roll to barely passing. And um, some of our counterparts like Stai and Bronx Science actually have homework policies. So we're wondering if there's something that we could get in writing, maybe sent out to the tech parent and teacher community so that we all know exactly what your vision is and we're all clear on that. So are you okay. able to help us with that? Yeah. So one, I mean, like, so this person who's asking the question, um, they're like, there's way too much homework. I don't know what yeah. perspective that is. I don't know if that, that that means the teachers are actually not going for the policy or they just think that even if they adhere to the policy, there's too much homework. Um, we do absolutely have a policy. It is posted on the website. You can see it right now. You go into policies, you go to homework, it's right there. Um, and uh, I love the comparisons to the style and, and uh, you know, the, 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 these are things that it's just, uh, they, it's uh, years of trying to pit us against each other. So we, we figured this out. And so we're, we're, the schools are all basically aligned 
Um, and uh, so we know, so we can't get pitted against each other. But um, we absolutely do have a policy. Um, and the and if teachers are not adhering to the policy, that's a different story. Usually it goes in two ways. A teacher's not adhering to the policy. We need to know. And then we have conversations with teacher and we get things where it needs to be. Or the teacher thinks that they're giving homework, right? That takes a certain amount of time and it's taking everybody longer than that. And the teachers may not be aware of that. And kids are not advocating for themselves and, and saying, hey, Mr. Newman, you might not realize, you might think that this is taking us a half an hour and it's taking us two hours. And normally when that happens, uh, that, that uh, a teacher sort of cuts things down and gets things in line. So it's either they're, they're uh, going around the policy and they know it and then they, we need to have a conversation with them or they're not really aware that how long it's taking. And either way, but one or the other, we need to know. And so you need to, if you think a teacher is, is going through this policy, it would be great if you could talk to the teacher about it. But if you don't feel comfortable with that, you just need to go to their AP and we'll, we'll sort that out. Um, but we absolutely have a policy. It's, on, it, it's online, it's under our policies. It's a very strict policy. And, uh, and we, we ask for teachers to adhere to it. Cindy? Well, can I ask just that maybe, you know, I know that parents advocated for a, a, a COVID homework policy, basically this time last year, or maybe a little, cause the kids were dying. And um, if I'm not mistaken, it was 30 minutes per class or what? Can I, when we started school in the fall, I didn't feel that that policy was still in place. I thought it was a discussion for the crisis of last spring. And so, and I kind of forgot about it, to be honest, until a parent wrote in. My kid's always doing homework, so I can never tell if that's him or that's just too much homework. So um, maybe just a reminder, um, to parents and students that this is the, and teachers, that this is the policy. Maybe everyone needs to be reminded because I was thinking when this parent wrote into us, hmm, is that policy still in place? I kind of felt like that was yeah. for last spring. So well, you, no, you're that correct, might be Cindy. helpful for we, everyone. We've defaulted back to our regular standing homework, homework policy. The policy you are referring to was for last spring. Um, oh. now, you know, now it's, you're obviously receiving homework you know, every other day for every class. I see some interesting things somebody put in the thing, chat, I'm sorry, the chat's moving a little quick right now, um, that homework, um, wait, what did they say about homework? Oh, somebody's getting homework Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, that's, well, um, it's allowable if they're given the assignments on Friday and they're given like a, a you know, assignment that might take, you know, uh, three times longer than normal. That, that's actually okay. But if they're given on Friday an assignment that's due on Saturday, that's not okay. They, an assignment given on Friday must be due on Monday. Matter of fact, not Monday, Tuesday, because that's the next time the class actually meets. They can't, they can't send you assignment on Saturday due on Sunday. No, nothing, assignments are only due when class meets. Accl assignments are given when class meets, and they're due when class meets. So you have until the next time class meets to do that assignment. They can't ask, tell you an assignment's due 11 o'clock at night or any other time, but when class actually meets the very next time. So you have two full days to get an assignment done. You cannot be given an assignment on a Saturday that's due on a Sunday. You cannot be given an assignment on a Saturday that's due on a Monday. It has to be given on Friday in class due on Monday. So they might give you a three times, they could give you an hour and a half assignment on Friday that's due on Tuesday, the next time the class meets, but they can't send you assignments over the weekend and they can't send you assignments at night and the assignments can't be due, due at night. So if any of these things are happening, you need to let the AP know. This is not stuff that should be happening. Okay, so, I'm, so I'm can I just make sure I understand? So, even though we're hearing from parents that students are back in the position that they were in kind of this time last year, that they're, many of them are all day on their computers in class. And I know it's every other day, but that there is no 
restriction on the amount of homework being given. No, that's not true. There's an absolute time-wise restriction on how much homework can be given. So what, what if you go to, hold on, I think somebody put it in the chat. Um, yes, Cancy oh, put it in. Our fabulous Cancy put right. it in. So, so here, all right. So here, we'll just let's all review it. Have this, right. So, so just let me be clear. It talks about duration, and um, right. so it says twenty to thirty minutes of uh, per class. Now, class are double periods, okay. right? So they're double periods, so you could double that. But it's every other day. So the most a teacher could give on a Thursday is um, well. The most a teacher could give on a Tuesday is an hour's worth of homework that is not due until Thursday, the next time the class meets. Okay. That's all okay. they could do. An hour max every other day okay. for a class because classes only meet every other day. That's it. Okay, so thank you for helping us all re-understand because we've gotten off of policy versus but then the parent has policy. To reach out so the parent the, has the, to go home. The parent reach oh, out wait, to the so AP. I heard nothing what either you said. You both talked the same thing. Hang on. I'm just saying. So what I'm hearing you say is that if when the parents check in with their student, if their homework exceeds that, they need to check in with the teacher. And if no good response comes from the teacher, then you they move on to the AP. Is that how we would handle this? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then Thank you the so AP much. And, it keep... and then if there's an issue with the AP, then we'll move to you, Mr. Neiman, right? Yes, it should never okay. get to me though. Those <laughs> issues should never get to me. The AP okay. should be able to handle it, you know, and so, but yeah. But okay. if the parent feels uncomfortable going to the teacher because they don't want any sort of repercussion, right to the they AP. can go right to the AP. They could, yep. Okay, now I have a question about, we had and we had talked about this with the zeros. Um, so your kid has done, had gotten a zero for a, a, an assignment or two. The the student then makes up the work, reaches out to the teacher, the work has been submitted, and the grade still reflect a zero. Um, I understand your policy of uh, like a week, but now it's more than a week, and the, 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 the grade has not been changed in the system. What do you do in that instance? Yeah, that, that, it's the same thing. I mean, that's definitely something you reach out to the teacher because the teacher can fix that pretty easily. You know, But if the teacher you, hasn't gotten back to you uh, after you know, numerous Back to attempts, the AP again. Okay. Yep. To the AP. Yep. Okay. Just going back to the homework policy, and I appreciate you referencing that and us having the opportunity to actually read yep. over it. Um, what might be, um, just this is a suggestion, but it might be helpful maybe in your next like weekly bulletin that you send out, maybe reference yep. that because there's been so much emotion in the chat about it. And experiencing yep. with my own child, we've had assignments that the video itself was an hour and a long, uh, hour yep. and a half for health, although it was over a weekend. Um, also during recess and spring break, winter recess, those holidays, what is the policy for that? Because we've gotten homework, a parent will um, be finished with the Google Classroom checking missing assignments on Friday yeah. of that break and think that you're in the clear. And then Wednesday of that break, their homework assignments yeah. popping up. Okay, so, so the, on that same page, right, is a there's the vacation policy, right? And so, and it defines what vacations are, um, it, it, it defines clearly when you can and when you cannot give an assignment. And so uh, I'll, I'll read some of the pertinent stuff real, real quick. We're talking about winter recess, President's Week, spring break, and summer break. Vacation homework can only be assigned for classes that terminate in a former exam. That's an AP or a Regents class or a Project Lead the Way class. No one else can give a vacation homework no matter what. The only exceptions to this rule are classes that meet one semester, such as health, government, economics. Vacation homework must be assigned at least one week prior to the beginning of the vacation and should take no more than a typical weekend assignment. So in other words, that a typical weekend is you, if you wanna argue, it's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, which means you could get um, a three times an assignment. So, so if an assignment is, uh, is, could be typical for a double period class that we have right now, could be an hour each day, you're talking about the whole project, whatever it is, can only be three three hours maximum, right, of work. They have to find out about an entire week before vacation starts so they could do it um, a week before vacation if they want to. Um, and then it cannot be due the first day back um, just in case they have to print things or whatever it is. I mean, that's normal sort of stuff um, when we're in the building. 
But the bottom line is they have to have an extra week in advance. So if they want to do it in advance, they can have their vacation and enjoy it and do it in advance. It must be only in certain courses and it, it can't be more for our purposes right now, more than three hours in length. In, in a normal non-COVID, only an hour and a half in, uh, in length. Okay, I think that's very helpful um, because it is a concern and, I, and I'm, I'm still, I'm gonna suggest this again, that maybe just re, maybe issue that one more time okay. or just in a shared communication. And also yeah. it might be helpful to note the, um, the homework policy that, is it a, that it is effective as of, so we know that it's current. Because when you yeah. look down there, it says something about 2011. And I think that might have been confusing for parents, not knowing if this was the current active Brooklyn Tech homework yeah. policy. Okay. So that might be helpful as well. Well, those are all the questions that I had and Lincoln had. So for this part, I just, you know, I just noticed a couple of the parents had said, can we remind the teachers of the policy? Yeah. yeah. Um, I you know, I, 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 what it's uh, worth. I, I mean, uh, that's probably not the issue, but I'll remind you. I mean, it, it's probably one of the two issues that I described. And so, uh, but yeah. I, I also think in all fairness, a teacher may not, what they th think, how long they think it yeah. takes and in, yeah. in real life application might be. That's why, you know, we as the parent observers of what goes on at home, are helpful to them in saying, hey, by the way, you know, those last few assignments really took more than an yeah. hour, you know, every yeah. other day. Yeah, and that's, that's why, the difference. Yeah, that's because the teachers aren't going home reasons. and doing homework. Right. Yeah. It's, teachers it's aren't going home of, to do the homework. Right. It's literally one of two reasons. Either they're foregoing on the policy purposely and they understand that and maybe they're getting nervous that they're not finishing their curriculum and whatever it is, right? So it's maybe that that they, they're aware of the policy and they're just choosing not to follow it on a particular day, or they're not aware of how long it's taking your children to do uh, the homework. It's really one or the other. There's no situation where it's like, I didn't know the policy. That's not possible. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah. I wanted to add have one, one more. Oh, sorry. sorry. Go ahead. I just wanted to add one thing. Uh, we, because it was mentioned in the chat and we're seeing it in our children with the burnout and being overwhelmed with the amount of homework, yeah. not to, just to add to elaborate on this point, but it is difficult when they have the SEL days, which we ran into a couple of glitches yesterday. And I know some of that is understandable, but at the, in the same vein, it's also been over a year that we've been practicing in the remote. So that's been a mixed bag when it comes to alleviating the stress. If you can't get the link right, or if there was a session that was supposed to be two sessions, and then you get an email that morning that it's one session. So that also adds to the stress of the student mm. because we're trying, you're trying to give them that outlet yeah, yeah. and to support their mental health and give them a break. Yeah. But when it doesn't flow seamlessly, it, it's disappointing to the kids. Yeah. And it's like a letdown. And I know we have about three more SEL days. So if we can like get those right and get those great, I think that will go a long way in helping kids not feel as overwhelmed. Yeah. 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 No, I, I mean, that's, that's truly well received and understandable. And I think we've worked out through the day. Um, now that the day has happened, I think we've worked out all the glitches. And hopefully we'll hit the ground running. It'll be a lot more smooth next time. Mm -hmm. We Thank have you. two more. Um, we have two more questions. As you, as you know, you know, uh, parents got an opportunity to opt back into school for their child. Do you have any updates for us on what day that might come, you know, that that would get enforced and does it change anything? You know, I know you've said over and over your goal was not to mess with kids' schedules, but yeah. are, do you have any updates on that? Yeah, for sure. Us? Yeah, so um, the DOE is given as an implementation date. What's today? The, today's the 15th of 15th. the 26th. Um, it might be earlier, but it, it will be by the 26th. Um, no one's getting their schedule changed and we're not adding any cohorts. So it, it will be able to smooth it out and make it work. Now, that being said, there's a possibility that any kid, even a kid that did not opt in, there is a possibility that some people might get their cohorts moved from A to B for some reason, just because that's the way it works out. But so we will send out potentially new cohorts. Obviously all the kids who opted in, they never had a cohort. 
So they're going to get one. But there is a chance that even existing kids might have their cohorts changed. That is a possibility, although I think that would be rare. It is a possibility. Um, but a uh, not this uh, not this coming uh, Monday, but the Monday after, that is the last moment that we'll implement. In other words, I'm going to try to implement um, the, the new kids coming in before that. But in the very least, they will be in by the 26th. And no one's having their schedule. Okay. But cohorts might just. So, um, one last question. You want to do it, Lisa? Oh, are you going to ask the question about the sport? Yeah, you can do it. No, go ahead. Have at it. Oh, oh someone put in the chat, and I know our, our baseball families have been experiencing this, and you may not have the answer. Um, it might be a Josh Rubin question. Is there any clue when PSAL will actually have a schedule for us? And um, some parents are asking about practice schedules, but I know from experience that that's up to the individual coach and they'd have to ask the coach that, but you don't happen to have any updates for PSAL schedules by any chance, do you? No, the website has been blank. Um, no, I mean, they, they're, they're tryouts happening, there are practices uh, um, going to be happening. They're going to have a game schedule, actual games coming in at some time in May, but that schedule has not been released. Okay. Okay. That, that, I think, is that all we got? That's um, it. I think so. I don't oh, know right. if, if we answered. Um, I guess yeah, there's a couple of like... questions in, um, about the, the pin for AP exams. Um, someone sent their email, was, uh, the kid did not get their email. So yeah. they're asking if you can resend it. Yeah, that, that would have to be uh, said. I think, I think uh, Ms. Nottingham put the email in the chat. It's yeah, there was, a, there was a post in there, AP testing or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one where that goes. Okay. All right. Um, uh, somebody asked about just freshman advisory and it not happening on a more regular basis. Um, I don't know if that was just a one person's experience but advise just tell us again how when does freshman advisory meet once once a week oh it's, it meets one it, 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 it would meets once every two weeks but it's a double period class so it used to meet only once a week for a single period so it's it's it it's it, time wise it's the same amount okay so it meets once every two weeks once every two weeks on a particular day okay. it doesn't follow the ab schedule it's on a particular day so if yours meets Mondays, okay. it always meets Mondays. It's it just it worked out that way. <laughs> just to keep it. Simple. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's right. I, I don't know. It looks like we went through all the all the questions. All right. Sounds which is, good. Which is amazing. Right. <laughs> yep. Parents yeah. are confirming their children have only had two advisory meetings and they keep getting canceled. To, uh, more than advisory. one parent put that in the chat. So maybe that's some, some feedback for you that yeah, something needs that, that to be like investigated. A, um, it, that might be a particular teacher issue. If, if uh, you're having issues around advisory, definitely email me directly and I'll see what I can do. I'll put my email address. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm hoping, and you know, students, while we're getting know, information from you, you're, you know, also getting feedback that you probably wouldn't be aware of from, you know, our, our parent experience. So I'm hoping this is helpful for these yeah. meetings are helpful for you as well. I mean, Absolutely. seems to be working like that lately. Right. Um, do we have anything else? Are we ready to do, 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 do? It looks like it looks like okay. The, well, the one parent asked, "How do they know when advisory meets?" But what, that would be in pupil path in their schedule, correct? Yeah, that's a, it. Should be on your Just, schedule. Yep. Okay, so if parents check in pupil path, um, yeah, yeah, and people, uh, it's right. not there. Okay. All right. Email me, and I'll I'll sort of walk you through what, where you could see it, and and if not, I'll I'll send you the schedule directly. 
I just want to say, um, we, wait before we say goodnight, as the communication yeah, sure. team, we always so, want to make sure we keep all of our parents informed about what's happening. And we also want to give you an opportunity to share with us. So we will be sending, if you haven't signed up to receive Tech Talk, well, you're here at this meeting, but sometimes that happens word of mouth, but we want to make sure that you're on the email mailing list. We'll be sending more information and updating our information on our end. So please make sure that you have signed up. And if you have any questions, you can send them to Cindy and Lisa at PA Presidents, PA President at bths.edu. Absolutely. Thank you. And on that note, thank you so thank much, you everybody. Everyone. Thank you for coming uh, we'll see to you May tonight. 20th, May 20th, May 20th election. election. Think remember. about where, what you want to contribute, what committee you'd like to be on if you don't want to run for a position. We need everyone who wants to help. Thank you so much. We Good did. night. Thank you. Thank you. Be well. Have a great night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Thank Thanks you. Thanks, everyone.